All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, in recent years, there has been a growing interest in digitization of education in Nigeria. This is due to the fact that technology has the potential to improve the quality of education and make it more accessible to a larger number of students. Now, one of the major initiatives in this regard is the introduction of e-learning platforms and online courses. Many universities and other educational institutions in Nigeria now offer online courses which allows uh, students to study at their own pace and form, uh, from anywhere with an internet connection. This has made education more flexible and convenient for many people who may not have been able to attend traditional classroom-based courses. So tonight we're asking what is the present and the future of digitizing education in Nigeria. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 01 803 You can also see that as at Wayshow. I've got one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, you're already doing something with online e-learning. How is that for you? And do you see it, you know, um, getting really, really, uh, what's it called, popular or more acceptable in Nigeria? Um, I think, I think, um, Online courses or e-learning um, platforms are already popular in Nigeria, right? A lot of people are push, pushing it. Um, even um, universities like ABU have um, e-learning um, for masters, right? I have a friend who is currently taking it. She doesn't have to travel all the way to Zaria to do her masters, and before you know, by next year she'll be done. And I think that's quite um, that's quite amazing. And one thing that online or e-learning platforms have actually done for us is you don't have to travel so far or go to a particular location for you to take some courses or to get the certificates that you need. In the comfort of your home, you can get education. In the Absolutely. comfort of your home, you can gather knowledge on a particular subject matter. And in a few months, in a month, in three months, one year, before you know you're a professional, right? Absolutely. The only, the only, um, the only downside, downside, yeah, the only downside that I see to it is when it comes to, when it comes to some, some subjects or some that requires skills hands -on that, yeah, that, that requires hands-on learning, right? Where you have to be very practical. Now, in cases like that, obviously, you cannot use mm. e-learning platforms. You can only use e-learning for probably the theory aspect of it. But where you have to be hands-on, you have to build something, you have to um, probably do something physical, then you have to be present. So that, those are the only um, Downside. downsides that I see. Mm. Well, aside that, yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah, so, I mean, Isi, you are a teacher, and I know that you have used, especially since COVID, with, with all the drama happening, you've used uh, a lot of technology to be able to um, transfer knowledge to your students, right? So how has that experience been for you? You know, um, would you say that it is a lot more easier for you as now the educator or, you know, classroom is still preferable for you? All right. Thank you. First, I would say education is acquisition of skill. Now, if you're acquiring a skill set in that context, you have to understand that whoever you are teaching, you are teaching that individual to acquire a particular skill. Now, where the person has challenges is where you as a teacher have not been able to deliver it using different methodologies, mm. okay? I have the yardstick to, oh no, I won't say yardstick. I have the opportunity to teach online and on site. Everything has its pros and cons, of course. But for older learners, I would say yes, online platform is the goat is the best tool to use but for young learners mm -mm, i wouldn't advise you to use <laughs> online platforms all the time for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. there should be that avenue where they can have a one-to-one -one that is having to interact with the teacher physically on site instead of being in mm -hmm. Um, in, a, in a Zoom meeting okay. because they have, they have different things that can actually keep them uh, distracted in class. You keep talking to the child and you are asking, what are you doing? The child will tell you, I'm with you. But in actual fact, that child might be, you know, playing games on the phone or playing games on the laptop. So you have this challenge of 
individuals or parents not supervising mm. that child. So yes, it has its pros and of course it has its cons. For older learners, online platform is the go-to. Mm. I was going to say that I'm a very kinetic learner, right? I like to feel, I like to touch what it is that I'm learning. And I have started, hmm, I don't waste money for this education matter. So I started, <laughs> a, I started an MBA and because of the style of learning, it was just going to be so funny. Like, you know, I have to do everything by myself. Yeah. I dropped it. I started another MBA. I managed to do the pre-MBA pre part. I completed that one. I dropped it. Mm. So, um, so there's a particular e-learning platform on, online that, you know, gives you the room to do a seven-day trial. So what I now did mm -hmm. with this one, I did, um, I tested something and, you know, because it was too technical, I, I, by the second day, I already knew that mm -mm, I'm not going there. But what then happened was I then took up another course. And that course now, I've just, it's just um, two days I, I registered. I've already, I'm already in my week four. I'm almost done with the, the yeah. first module. And because what I observed was because I have very, very keen interest. Yeah. So I think even with digitized learning, mm. right, there has to be some connection because, again, there's nothing that, you know, you, you are just in front of a computer. So that interest must, first of all, be in it uh, for you to be able to then now stay on that course. If not, it's difficult for you to really, you know, when you're not having like classmates to interact yeah, with, yeah, especially if yeah. you are a kinetic learner like myself, mm. right? But let me bring in our mm -hmm. guest. So Sharon Ecott is a self-disciplined, well-organized, and driven professional with a solid understanding of marketing principles and product management. Hey, She is skilled in marketing, um, strategy planning, or strategic planning, and business development, and oversees product development at PAVE HQ, a higher education digital ecosystem platform powering global education and career guidance for Africans and she has joined me live or joined us live in studio. Hi Sharon. Hi. By the way, you look amazing. You know, we Thank met you. on uh, a quick background. We met on Saturday and immediately she opened her mouth to explain what she was doing. I said, I ah, know I need you in my life mm -hmm. <laughs> because I mean, for us at, on this platform, we try as much as possible to bring in resourceful people again that we know that would impact because I'm very passionate about education, right? Um, that would impact people in different ways. I mean, your organization does a lot. So maybe we'll start with, you know, uh, first of all, do you believe that digitizing education, right, is the way to go? And do you believe it has really come to stay in Nigeria? Um, yes, thank you very much, first of all, for having me. I feel really honored to be here today. Um, yes, I do think that um, digitizing education is very important. And if we take it way back to the COVID-19 pandemic, where a lot of things were shut down and inclusive of schools, and a lot of schools had to adapt digital learning, especially for their students who were either in maybe the final classes so that they don't have to be, you know, delayed. And for a school like the university I attended, Covenant University, we also had to start taking um, a lot of courses and certification courses on Coursera, HubSpot, and the likes. And, you know, it just, we were able to move ahead of that. So imagine people who live in um, rural and marginalized areas who, for that nine, ten, one year of their lives, were literally Precisely. stagnant with no growth. You know, so I definitely think that digitizing education is something that, um, is here to stay, especially in Nigeria these days. There are so many online schools, Trefford, and even a lot of young people these days, teenagers, are building digital classrooms like um, the founder of class, Nathan Nwachuku, who is, I think, a 20-year-old boy. And he has, he's built this amazing technology to host um, on online classes, which a lot of big organizations like uh, Talent QL and the rest are you know, part of. So I definitely think that digitalizing education is the way forward, especially for, I mean, just to make education, um, to make education accessible, flexible, and I mean, relevant to the need of the 21st century, you know, world, which is today. Mm -hmm. so, so let me quickly, just quickly touch on something before I, I, I'll let Jennifer and Isi come in. Um, it's interesting how, you know, the world is changing, times are changing, right? Um, but do you think that if we 
stick to or if we truly embrace digital education, right? Do you think that the structure of Nigeria can accommodate it? Because again, it's one thing for us to say that this is a fantastic learning tool. It's another thing for the people, like you mentioned, the rural areas, the rural communities and all of that. Those people don't have access. Do we not see a, a situation where we begin to cut off, you know, like marginalize those people that they are not able to access education? Or do you think the, the technology will be um, modified in a way that it would work with or without maybe probably internet connectivity? Um, so, I mean, aside, digital learning is more than, you know, internet connectivity. It has to do with electricity because you need to power these devices that you learn on. And with the current economic situation with, in Nigeria, especially with dealing with um, the fuel subsidy, a lot of people, either there's, if NEPA doesn't give them light, it's darkness for them. So in situations like that, with the current, uh, you know, with the way Nigeria is currently, I don't personally think that um, digitalizing education can work 100%, especially when you put in low income in earners into the equation, you know, or schools that can barely even afford a computer system. So, I, can, I mean, I'm referring to government schools as well. You know, a lot of government schools are underdeveloped, so undeveloped. So it's, um, I don't think Nigeria is ready yet for- For 100%. Yes, but I definitely think that it is a conversation that we need to start having and they, by they, I mean the government need to hear us and know that it is, it, it is the future because I mean, it, it caters for just about anybody. I can be a sales girl in a store, but still have access to education aside the four walls of a classroom through my smartphone, through the internet. So I definitely think that Nigeria is on its way there, but we are not just there yet. Awesome. Jennifer. Yeah, so I like your response to that, um, and I agree with you 100%. Um, there was also something um, EC had mentioned earlier which I also um, agree with, and it has to do with the younger learners, mm -hmm. right? Um, I've been a teacher before, and I know that there were times where I taught in class, and I had some students who had to stay back because they had more questions or probably didn't even understand anything that was being taught in class, right? There were some that I had to take extra time to teach and to put them through on, on that particular subject, right? Now, when we talk about digitizing education and... We want kids to start learning on e-learning platforms and joining via Zoom or just going on a platform, like you said, like the young guy who created, or maybe platforms like Lightroom, for example. You go there, you take lessons. Now, what about kids who don't understand immediately, right? Kids who want you to actually give them like special tutoring because there are people who don't understand at the go. Right, even growing up, I also know that I, I kind of relate to what um, who I was saying earlier. I like hands-on learning, right? I like one-on-one -on -one learning. I learn faster that way than when I have to go online to learn something, right? It takes me a longer time to assimilate and then process the entire thing than the average than the average person. So, how do we cater to young learners like that? Um, so, and, and I think um, when it comes to education, education is more than the one-on-one -on -one engagements that you have in a classroom. Um, to learn something, I, I, in as much as you know, I would learn from what my lecturer or my teacher is saying, I can as well go on the internet and I can learn and you know, watch videos and more interactive and practical videos. So I think um, aside you know, the general classroom learning situation, you have the internet, which is an entire school on its own that you can learn just about anything. And you can also engage in, you know, very much interactive and engaging sessions with people from, you know, that you don't even know, strangers on the internet to discuss on certain topics and, you know, get more insight on them. But I personally think that for the younger generation, they are very, they are more of visual people. Mm -hmm. So making use of things that would grab their attention and keep their attention, and, you know, keep retain their attention, it. retain their attention during the um, class, 
is something that should be explored on and they are not they don't have a long attentive span yeah. so you need to keep your lessons short interactive and engaging for the younger generation and i think um that way you will be able to you know get more younger people to understand however some people are listeners some people are readers like i for one am a reader no matter how much you speak if i'm not reading it i really would not understand what you're saying so yes we have different styles but the thing is um not everybody i mean we can't technology can't really suit hundred percent of people there are some people that is work for excellently and there are for some people that you know would struggle on one thing or the other but um the majority of people, aside the younger generations, we're talking about the older generations, the people who have very busy professional lives, they still can get as many certifications as the ones through the internet. So, um, you know, looking at it on a wider range, I personally think it's still good. Okay. Mm. All right, so let's quickly run off on a break. When we come back from that break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic digitizing education in Nigeria. We have with us Sharon Ikot. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So I quickly want to have one small view on uh, young learners. The truth is, right, like you rightly said, they are very visual. And also, they are very auditory, right? Because if you listen to, I've seen some children, they've never left the shores of this country. Just by watching all those, they are lullabies and all of that they can they speak they act they dramatize like you know they hey, yeah, I'm coming, don't, you know so you see the children doing all of those things so i believe that you know if the content of the digital learning right it, if it is interesting enough yeah if it can hold their attention they would learn when you were talking about attention span even us as adults <laughs> this course i'm doing the the highest uh, video that i'm watching is six minutes if you don't fast like that, you, you, will, you will lose me. Because the truth is that too many things is taking our yeah, attention. Yeah. So you literally must. So what I do these days now, 5.30 a.m. or before 5, I wake up. I study till like 9 a.m. So that time, I'm not distracted. My phone is somewhere far from me. But let me come to you, Isi. A quick... All right. Hi. Now, for me, I, um, I, I got something from what you said earlier when you said that we have the internet, that was spot on. I mean, there is nothing like the University of Eugene. It teaches you practically everything or anything you want to know. But let's come back to digitizing the education sector in Nigeria. We know that the curriculum is almost a cake because it was coined years ago. If you had to give an insight into some of the things that could be tweaked in the curriculum, what would you do? What would you say? Hmm. Hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I didn't really Okay, you didn't get, so she's talking about the curriculum, right? That um, if you say you want to adopt digitizing education in Nigeria is it is the current cur curriculum is it easy for us to adapt that to the to the digital platforms or we really need to like restructure can we t are we going to tweak it mm. change it or modify it mm. or put some sort of innovation to it to marry it to what we have currently in Nigeria um, I think that we definitely need to modify the curriculum in Nigeria a lot of things that are being taught in the classrooms these days, I really don't think that a student would need in their, um, you know, in practically all of their lives, or they're not literally important information. So I think we'll definitely need to modify it. I'd only stick to the ones that are, the ones that are more important. And I, you know, I tend to realize that in schools these days, they just, they don't teach these kids things that would prepare them for life outside school exactly so a lot of them go into school with really bright ideas but they are very much confused on the next steps to take because they do not have that you know foundation on what to expect so they are lost they are confused and that is really the present situation of a lot of um you know teenagers in today's 
world so i definitely think that the curriculum needs to be modified to cater for you know more things aside um more things aside the generic courses and classes that you know we take things that cover self-discovery interpersonal skills exactly and leadership skills. but you know you, you mentioned when we had that conversation on saturday that you are you um your organization rather does things like that like a bridge year a big big bridge um, gap, gap gap year for children you know how do you think we can adapt that you know and what exactly is it that you guys do for young children um okay so we have the gap we have the pave academy which under the pave academy we have the African Teen Tech Festival, and then we have the Gap Year program. So, um, the African Teen Tech Festival is it's like a one-day event where we get as many as thousands of teenagers with very innovative tech um, tech ideas come and pitch their um, startup ideas, and then you know get the necessary funding and mentorship to you know build this product. A lot of them have really great products, but they do not have that business mindset, you know, to push this product to market. So we, you know, take them through that process of internships and mentorships to, and, you know, funding as well to bring this, their, you know, product, this, their idea to a product, you know, a product stage and then skill in the market. We also, you know, involve schools with our school innovation challenges and um, teach with tech, where teachers and school, innovate, um, school innovators, you know, can, also win cash prizes to push um, basically they will just let us know like hey this is how I think using technology in my classroom can you know enhance education and learning and you know we look at the most innovative ideas and the last one we had in partnership with Edu Focal was very insightful because you realize that a lot of teachers have so many brilliant ideas on how to use technology in their classrooms that you know could enhance learning but they do not have that tools to push this um, agenda and then we also had something where we showed you know school innovators where what a 21st century classroom using technology looks like and it's a surprise you but a lot of schools even um, federal, um, government schools are willing to you know adapt this technology in their classrooms then we have the gap year program Absolutely. the gap year program is a transformative um, self-discovery career discovery um, leadership three months program where it's basically to either hand us something or birth something in these teenagers so that by the time they are going into university they are pretty much prepared to face the 21st market um, you know marketplace and basically life beyond they're not going in as timid teenagers they're going in prepared and we personally believe that pave that you don't need to finish school to you know to be a rock star pretty much right from when you're in school you can identify your talent and you can build on it so when you're finishing school you're finishing strong and ready to face whatever you know the workforce you know has in store so for you. this this um this initiatives that you do for children are they free you know or do they come at a cost you know because again what we try to do is pass on information so that whatever it is that somebody is doing, they probably plan. So it, does it come at a cost or it, it's free? The African Teen Tech Festival is absolutely free, both for schools and um, teachers and teenagers. However, the oh. Gap Year program goes for 80,000 naira. So it's very, very subsidized months. rate. For the okay. three-month session. And I mean, aside the three months, we, we don't just, after the three months, these um, teenagers don't just leave us and go. Some of them who want to do internships, we place them into companies that fit exactly what they've identified as what they want to, to do study. with their lives. Mm. Those of them that you know want to go ahead to schools, we place them in universities that we know is that this course they want to study. It's one of the best, and you know, it's in line with whatever they want to do. So you know, after the gap year program, you know, we build on in other internships or student placements for this. And you also provide. Um, I, I I heard you say then that you also provide financial aid. Yes. You know why I'm saying this now? Because we're in tough times, right? Parents are, I mean, we're seeing what the, the price of the dollar is looking like. And parents are actually at that point where, especially some parents, the children, some children just finished WIAC, they're about to go to university and all of that. So how can you help those parents, you know, to say, okay, you know what, we can help with school fees, payment, you know, apply for loans or whatever. Government say they want to give us loan. We don't know how their structure would look like, mm. you know. But I'd rather uh, I'm safer with a private organization yeah. giving me a loan 
for study, yeah. Yes, yeah, so um, with, pay, with the pay platform, um, aside, we have schools of as low as $600 a year. So we don't just, you know, we don't just um, go into partnerships with just high-end universities because we try to cater for just about anybody. And we also offer student loans at a very discounted rate as well as um, tuition payments. So you can easily pay for tuition off from our platform as a very, you know, low rate other than what's the black market rate or, you know, what you would get from anywhere else. So that way we're able to aid people with student loans at a very affordable interest rate with a payment plan that is beneficial based on, you know, where you work, how much you earn, we can, you know, um, you know, be able to build a payment plan for you. And we will also help, you know, with easy tuition payments. So you don't really, and it's not just about, it's not just, so when we take a student in, PAVE is, PAVE is concerned about your, ed, your entire education and career life cycle. So when you, get, when you go abroad, we are looking at, okay, what's the next step? You need to open a bank account. You need to find a place to leave. So we have this strategic partnerships that whenever, okay, we have a student going abroad. So it just, it's like almost like making them, you know, settle them very nicely, nicely into, the, into system. the system. Exactly. I get you. I get you. So I mean, so um, the educational structure in Nigeria. Yeah, go ahead quickly. Okay, one quick one, yeah. What about, I'm glad that you talked about the, what you can do for teachers or what you've been doing with teachers, okay? Can you throw more light on how teachers can use um, um, technology to scale up as teachers, aside from doing online courses, of course? How are you partnering with teachers? <laughs> to, maybe we should throw more light because I think you mentioned something around teachers. Yeah. So what's the what's yeah. the partnership for teachers like? Um. So the partnership for teachers is basically to provide them. So a lot of teachers have really great ideas, but for instance, they do not have laptops to you know draft out proper course um, lessons, outlines, outlines, and all so they have to keep writing it. Um. Sometimes they want to send um, maybe like the, the students on holidays. And they need to, you know, send in a handout of things to their students, but they do not have that tool to, you know, do that. So with um, with Pave, our parent company, Imperial Education Technology, where we, in partnership with Replica, build um, devices, and we give out to these teachers, you know, to help build on this their skills and. Um, are teaching with technology pretty much okay mm. nice so talking about the gap year program um what are the requirements requirements for that um we're looking at students between 15 to 22 years old mm. students who um for those who are around 22 years old should they already be in uni or is there any particular criteria so basically i'm looking at the i'm looking at the entire school year right and how many um, months some of them have for holidays right i mean for students who are yet to enter university obviously they have they have the time to be able to attend for those who are currently already in university, university yeah. right once they have holidays sometimes there are some schools where their holidays don't um, pan out for like three months some probably two months or one month so how would that work um, the gap year program is it's a virtual it's a virtual program first off and it's just three times a week Mm. It's three times a week and not more than two hours a so day. So it's very flexible. So it's very flexible, exactly. And um, so the way the gap year is structured in terms of our curriculum, they are certain, you get to pick the classes that you want to join because we don't believe in students just learning just about anything that they and we know is not going to be beneficial to them. For instance, why am I learning social media management when I know it's not in line with anything I want to do? So they just get to pick classes mm -hmm. that are strictly in line with what they want to do and we are when we look at the gap when we you know we talk about the gap year our idea is or you know what we do is basically for students who are about to finish for like this ss3 students who are just you know graduated and a lot of them are not going to go into school immediately also some of them are not going to go to school till january so these are the people that you know that's go your target exactly yeah. our target market so what happens if a student has completed the gap year program and decides okay you know what i studied um project the last time and i don't think that's what i want to do is there like um, a provision for them to come back again to the gap year and take something else yes there's provision for them for to come free? back to the gap year <laughs> um so no not subsidized for, not for free since yes, they're already in the system yeah um 
we as it's a 12 weeks program right and the first the six we have six weeks for the self-discovery leadership trainings and then we have six weeks for practical career courses so obviously they would just be taking the six weeks for practical courses not necessary because i mean they've gone through that stage of the self-discovery and career development but then the beauty about the gap year is no matter how many cohorts you join you would definitely always be learning something new mm. because we're not like we're going to you know we're not, we're not bringing we don't bring the same um facilitators. facilitators so there's always someone that is definitely going to say something different something that you feel or you know you might you might need mm. you just might need to hear yeah. so there's always something different okay mm. from <laughs> now, so what are the investment opportunities? <laughs> like, do you have any investment opportunities? So for people, somebody said whether there are investment opportunities. Is it for the for us now to go and invest in you people? How do we invest? No, okay. You mentioned something around if children have great um, ideas for businesses, you would support them, you will fund them, and you provide mentorship and business internships. strategy um, plan for them, internships yeah. for them. Okay, that works. That works. Uh, do we have comments? Quickly. Yes, I have comments. Go ahead. Okay, it says, Good evening, my dear. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters. Of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Digitizing education in Nigeria. My dear beautiful sister, EC, made mention of two things. She said that when the student is taught, that student should be taught about what he or she will be in future, not only for teaching side. She also made mention of thorough supervision of every student so that the student will not be distracted and be focused. Your guest made mention of when digitizing Niger um, education in Nigeria is introduced, there should be maintenance and sustainability of it. Nigerians should not start what they cannot finish. Hmm. Let us learn how to maintain and sustain digitization for a good and quality education system. My name is Daniel Ilo, Ways Regular Fan. Thank yeah. you, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. All right, so I have a comment here that says digitizing education in Nigeria is like putting on a coat on a monkey. Yes. <laughs> we like to borrow or assume anything we see somewhere else without asking the right questions, whether it can be proper to us in our own world. In this regard, yeah. I believe that what works in Europe and in America cannot necessarily work in our own part of the world. Europe and America are more individualistic in nature and even on how they learn, but we are more or less community-oriented human beings. We learn more in community. Hmm. Apart from this, education should holistically, education should holistic in the sense of being mental, physical, social, and spiritual. And you cannot achieve these in digital space, but in a location. If digitizing is the way of the world in learning Europe and America, hmm. Would have closed all their schools. It cannot work in Nigeria with no lights. This is from Santos. Try Santos. <laughs> you just you just have to dash our hope. But you see, anybody that knows me knows that I would have been the, like I'm the I'm the least person on earth that will ever say I want to go and take a course online, let mm. alone pay my money for it because yeah. I know that I will not learn it. Yeah. I told you people that I've spent money. I've done. I've dumped like four. Yeah. You know. But I think the perfect fit would work. Right. First of all, you, the, the person must have an interest in what it is that you're about to learn. That is Absolutely. enough to sustain you, you know, learning digitally. But thank you so much, Sharon. Thank We're going to bring you more because she has a very fantastic initiative that she does for children with her NGO. So we'll bring you for that one thank much you. later. Thank you so much. Thank you, EC. Thank you, Jennifer. Now, remember, before we go, ensure you. you follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all the engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Um, if, we, if, you if you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. Instead, give them tools, uh, the, the use of which will lead to a new way of thinking. We'll see you guys tomorrow with our ladies' night out. I have so many interesting topics for tomorrow. But hey, we'll see you guys. Enjoy. <laughs>